A night of impartation. The Grace Factor with Pastor Kevin Brown. But the blood of Christ speaks of what? Justification, redemption, reconciliation. This is the message that you're supposed to be persuaded by. Sunday, January 24th, 2016. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. Service starts 6 p.m. With national recording artist Canton Jones. <laughs> Kingdom Vision Christian Center, 1945 Beesbury Road, Charleston, South Carolina. Or visit kbchristiancenter.com. You're now tuned into the world of Kingdom Vision Christian Center with Pastor Kevin Brown. Equipping and empowering God's people as instruments of righteousness. Where your freedom in Christ makes the difference in your life. Now for today's message. Let's go to the book of Romans first. Romans chapter 7. The title of my message is The, the Inner War. I said, What? The Inner War. See, your battle, again, your battle is not with Satan. Did you hear what I said? What did I just say? Your battle is not with Satan. Now, you may want to blame Satan. <laughs> you know, like, anybody, remember, anybody uh, the older folk remember this, Flip Wilson. The devil made me, you know, the devil made me do it. <laughs> the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. And we used to laugh at that, you know what I'm saying? We used to, we used to laugh at that. But can I tell you something? The devil ain't making y'all do anything. Yeah, not no believer. You know, the devil's not making the believer do anything. Why? Because, because Christ Jesus, our Lord, defeated him. So he is now wounded. He's a defeated foe. You understand, the Bible says that, that you know, in the book of Colossians, it talks about that the Lord paraded him through the, through the, through the city with his tail between his legs. Because that's what, that's what kings did. When the kings conquered their enemies, yes. they paraded them through the streets of the city so everybody can see that he is defeated. Yes. Did you hear, are you hear what I'm saying? That's what, that's what Saul tried to do. When God told Saul, kill everybody. Oh. Don't, leave any, don't leave nobody. Yes. Kill everything. No, he saved the king. You know why? Because he wanted to parade the king through the city of Israel. To show that he conquered them. But that's not what God told him to do. God, he said, God said, kill everything. See, he wanted to get glory. Saul wanted to get glory. He wanted to, he wanted to parade the king through the streets. Showing that he defeated him. He disobeyed God. Are you listening to me? But that's what God did to Satan. Satan is no more of a, listen, Satan is no longer an issue. I, yeah, I, know, I know it's hard for you to, to digest this truth, but Satan is no longer an issue. The Bible says that Satan is under my feet. Well, he's really, it's really under the Lord's feet, but if he's under the Lord's feet, he has to be under your feet because you're the body. He's the head, but we are the body. He is the head, and we are the body. So if he's under the Lord's feet, he got to be under your feet because you're the body. So where is Satan? Where is Satan? That's where he's at. But that's where you got to put your flesh. That's where you have to put your flesh. Right there with Satan. Your flesh needs to be conquered. But it only can be conquered through faith. One person asked me, said, you know, I got a, I got, this is the truth. She said, I got a, I have a, um, I have a problem with sex. You know, say, this, is, this is a Christian. Man of God, I got a problem with sex. So what do you mean? She said, I got to have sex. I said, no, you don't have to have sex. Amen. That's what I told her. I said, no. See, that's what you think. See, you, you, you're convincing yourself to think that you must, you have to have sex. You don't have to have sex. 
Because sex is for marriage. Did this hear that? So if, if God says sex is for marriage and you're not married, you don't have to have sex. <laughs> so, I, said, the, I said, your problem is, I said, this is what your problem is. Your problem is that's how you think. See, if you think you got to have it, you got to have it. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's how you think. That's how you believe. So what happens is, Satan know how you think, so he'll just dangle a little worm right before you, you know, because he know how to get to you. He know how to tempt you. Didn't the Bible say, blessed is the man that endures temptation? Amen. That's the book of James chapter what? One, it says, blessed is the man, verse 12, blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord promised to them that love him. So we all know that we're going to be what? Tempted, but not of God. God don't tempt us with evil. Right. Temptation comes from the enemy. But that's as far as he can go. But he can only tempt you with that which you are what? Confessing and believing. Contrary to sound truth. So she was saying, oh, man of God, man of God, I've always had this problem. I said, what problem? Sex. I said, what do you mean? I said, what, what, what do you mean is the problem? I got to have sex. I said, no, see, see, that's wrong thinking. I said, first of all, you got to change the way you think. Because the Bible don't tell us that. See, the Bible tells us something totally different. He, the Bible tells me, I said, baby, the Bible says flee fornication. Do you, know, do you know that's in the Bible? You know what I'm saying? See, what you got to do, you got to start changing your confession. Because your confession is ruling you. I got to have a man. I got to have a woman. Well, if that's how you believe, guess what's going to happen? It's going to manifest. Yeah. Right. <coughs> now, look at Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The blood of Jesus is in this place. Yeah. I said the Spirit of God is here. Yeah. All, my, all I'm trying to do is get you guys totally free. Then she told me, she said, well, I said, well, daughter, I said, you got a boyfriend? I said, you got a boyfriend. You already got a baby, right? I said, yeah. I said, well, you're not helping yourself if you're putting yourself in the position to have another one. You know, I said, well, you know, well, yes. I said, anybody will be tempted if they're in a situation where they can be tempted. You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, in other words, if the, if the environment is conducive for temptation, you're going to be tempted. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? I don't, listen, listen. When I was a younger, when I was a younger fellow and I first got saved, I used to go witnessing. I used to witness everywhere. Me, Minister Levy, um, Minister Tyro, a bunch of us. We used to get together. We used to go witnessing. Sometimes we didn't have a whole lot of people with us. We used to go to, you know, two of us would go. One would go here. Another one would go there. I learned a lesson by doing that. Because... I remember we split up one time, and I was ministering to this. I was on, I was on, um, I was on Bat the Green, Bayside. I was on Bayside Manor, and on Bayside, you ain't got nothing. On Bayside, there's nothing but single females with children. So one day, I'm out I'm there on Bayside. I'm ministering. I'm ministering the word. I'm preaching to a young lady, you know, and she got she got to go in the house, you know. I'm preaching, so I go in the house with her. You know what I'm saying? And I'm preaching. I'm preaching that word. She closed the door. I'm preaching that word. I'm preaching. I'm preaching that word. And the girl already looked kind of good now. It wasn't like she was, you know, you know, trash. She looked good. I'm preaching that word. Now I'm preaching. Listen, I'm telling you the truth. I'm preaching. And here come the devil. I'm preaching. The devil starts talking. Boy, she looked good. Does she look good? <laughs> and I'm preaching and preaching. Next thing you know, I said, I got to get up out of here. <laughs> Shoot. Shoot. <laughs> I, said, yeah. I said, yes, sir. Because now the devil, listen, why? Because the environment is now conducive for Satan to operate. How many of you what I'm saying? I'm in mean, there preaching. As long as I was on the porch, as long as I was on the porch outside, I was good to go. I had no problem. But for some reason, she had to go in the house. And I got to go in there with you. I ain't going to stop preaching now. So I go in the house. I'm young in the Lord. 
I, you know, I'm, I'm on fire for God. You see what I'm saying? I ain't got too much, I don't have a, a, enough wisdom, spiritual knowledge, so I go in there, and I'm just ministering the word of God. Then here comes the devil. Oh, the, well, you know, you look pretty, huh? Say, yeah, okay, you're kind of pretty in here. And, you know, you're looking, you're looking around, you know, look at the, look what she got on now. You look at what she got on, all kind of stuff like that. I said, you know, I got to get up out of here. <laughs> Shoot. I said to myself, I said, oh, it's time for me to leave. Because I'm getting in the flesh, because I said, I'm getting in the flesh right now. I had to leave. Yeah. I said, sister, I said, listen. I, said, I remember this. I said, sister, listen. I said, man, we got service on Wednesday night and on Sunday on Friday night. We can come get, we can come and pick you up if you want to come to service. Just let us know, okay? And got up out of that house. But I learned a lesson. Anytime you put yourself in an environment that Satan can move, he will move. Are you ever listening to what I'm saying now? So I got smart. Pastor got smart. I said, if I go from now on, if I got to go and minister by myself, and I'm going to a female house, I got to take somebody with me. If No, sir. Ain't no more splitting up. No one on one. No. Because, listen, you, you, nobody here is smarter and stronger than Satan. Outside the will of God. As long as we stay in the will of God, as long as we walk in the spirit, the Bible said we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about, I'm strong in the Lord. 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 Yes, sir? And you get yourself up in that situation? Shoot. You be, for some reason, it seems like all your strength leaving. You thought you were strong, but you like, boy, something's wrong. No, sir. You got to run. That's why the Bible says flee fornication. It says run from it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So I, I, I understand that outside of the will of God, outside of the word, none of us are strong. That's right. Well, Pastor, what scripture, you stand, what, scripture you, what scripture are you standing on? The Bible says, shun the very appearance. Shun the very appearance of what? Evil. Evil. You may, your, your intentions may be right, but it don't look right. Did you hear what I said? Your intentions may be right, but it just don't look right. Now, I ain't read the scripture yet, except Genesis. Now look at uh, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. 7.14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under what? Yeah. Now you see that right there, that, that sold under sin? You see that? Oh, only two people see it. Y'all see that? Amen. Okay, I, that's a few more people. You see that? Amen. That sounds like everybody. Okay. I had to break that down. Because Paul says here, look what Paul says again. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under what? Amen. Sold, he said, I am carnal, sold under what? Amen. Okay. I looked that up because that, that stuck out to me. Oh my God. This word sold, he said, I'm sold under sin. He says, Listen, the law is spiritual, that's for sure. He says, but I am carnal, sold under sin. In other words, what he's trying to say, as long as a man is trying to live by the law, <laughs> if you're trying to live by the law, the law will only do for you is condemn you. It only reveals what we really are outside of being made righteous by God. So look what he says here. This word sold means this. Entirely under the control of the love of sinning. Let me say that one more time. Sold under sin. This word sold under sin, the term means to be entirely under the control of the love of sinning. See that there? The love of what? Sin. Totally, entirely under, under the control of of the love of sinning. Number two, as fully under the domination of sin as a slave is under his master. Write that down. As fully under the domination of sin as a slave is under his master. Number one was entirely under the control of the love of what? The love of what? 
So, so what, the, what, what, what Paul was saying, if you try, a man trying to be made righteous by the law would only be condemned by the same law, even though that law is spiritual. Why? Because it's dealing with a nature that is sinful. You follow what I'm saying? A night of impartation. The Grace Factor with Pastor Kevin Brown. But the blood of Christ speaks of what? Justification, redemption, reconciliation. This is the message that you're supposed to be persuaded by. Sunday, January 24th, 2016. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. Service starts 6 p.m. With national recording artist Canton Jones. Kingdom Vision Christian Center, 1945 Beesbury Road, Charleston, South Carolina, or visit kbchristiancenter.com. Trying to be made righteous by the law would only be condemned by the same law, even though that law is spiritual. Why? Because it's dealing with a nature that is sinful. You follow what I'm saying? So when a man is trying to live or he's trying to be made righteous by a law rather than being made righteous by Christ, the only thing it does is put him deeper and deeper trouble. That's what Paul was saying. Now let's, let's, let's read on. So he's talking about the sin nature. Verse what? We on verse what? 15. Okay, 15 says... <clears throat> For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. For what I hate, that I do, that do I. You see that there? Paul said, listen, the things I hate, I find myself doing. The things I hate, I know is not right, I find myself doing. What he's actually saying, he's being dominated by the sin nature. Even though he knows it's not right, yeah. he still finds himself doing the thing he knows is not right. Yeah. That is not the lifestyle of a believer. Right. Amen. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Even, though he's, even though Paul is referring to his experience trying to live by the law, he realizes trying to live by the law or trying to be made righteous by his own works only puts him into deeper trouble. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I'm trying to get you guys, I'm trying to teach this word in a way where it makes it easy. Because it is easy. It's hard when you're trying to do like Paul was saying. Paul was saying, listen, when you try to live by the law, in other words, I'm not saying, let's, not use the, let's not say live by the law. Let's say it this way. When you're trying to be justified by the law. When you're trying to be justified by the law, you can only be condemned by it. Amen. You see what I'm saying? You can only be condemned by it because righteousness can never be attained through keeping the law. That's right. But that's what Paul was trying to, Paul was talking about, okay, I'm a Christian now, but I, I, I need to be made righteous by the law. So he's realizing that the more he tried to be justified by the law, even though he was already justified because he's a Christian, he's realizing that it only puts him, sinks him, sinks him deeper and deeper and deeper into bondage. Yes. So the, 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 the revelation here was that deliverance, his, his salvation, his, his victory is in Christ. Yes. Yes. See what I'm saying? His righteousness is in Christ. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Look at verse uh, six, 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Listen to this. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that what? For I know that for I know that is for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth what? No good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not. But the evil, which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth where? Amen. I find then a law, a principle, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight 
in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my what? See, I see, this, this is what I want to get to. Paul says, I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my what? Members. But where's the sin at? He says, in my what? Members. Where? In my members. Okay. Now, verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Then he answers the question in verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, what? The but with the what? The flesh? The okay, now let me tell you something. When we use the term the flesh, it refers to the old man. Say old man. Old man. That's, that's what they call it. They say, you know, when we read the Bible, sometimes it says old man. It says old nature, right? Sin nature, old nature, lower nature, the flesh. So we, a lot of times when we talk about the flesh, we're talking about the old man or old nature, sin nature. See? So in other words, as long as you try to serve God in your flesh, you are actually using your lower nature, your sin nature, the sin nature. You understand? So Paul is saying in, in, in chapter 8, Paul goes on to say that in order for us as believers to walk in victory in, li in this life, we must walk in the spirit. Because as soon as you go from the spirit to the flesh, as soon as you get in the flesh, now you're operating under the, under the, uh, the guise of the old man. This is the war that I'm talking about. It's not the devil. The devil is not the one that you're warring with. That's not, that's not your problem. What you are warring with is the new man and the old man. That's right. But the Bible tells us that the old man has to be conquered through faith. Faith. Is, let's, let's look at um, Romans chapter 6. Go to Romans 6. Go back one verse, chapter. Look at verse 6. 6 and 6. Romans 6 and 6. You got it? It says this. Knowing this, you have to know this. You can't think it. You must know it. Say, I must know this. I must know this. Okay, what is it that you must know? I'm going to show you. We're going to read it right now. Verse 6 says, knowing this, that our old man. See that, there, that term there? Yeah. Old man, again, means flesh. It means sin nature, lower nature. You got that? You got that? Because you need to know when you are in it. You, you hear me over there to my, to my, to my left? You must know when you are in the flesh. See, I know when I'm in the flesh. You better know. Don't, don't act like you don't know. Because when you live in the flesh, the Bible says when you live in the flesh, you shall surely die. The end of a lifestyle in the flesh is death. Listen, it's, al it's also an open door for Satan. Because when you are in the flesh, you are actually operating in the kingdom of darkness. I'm going to say that one more time. When you are in the flesh, operating in the flesh, you are now in Satan's domain. You stepped out of God's domain you are now in Satan's domain because you are in the flesh. That's why the Bible says, and they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The Bible says, if the, the Bible says the word of God is not even subject to the flesh. That means, that means you must dominate your own flesh. You hear, are you hear what I'm saying? Because if you don't dominate your flesh, your flesh will destroy you. I don't care how minute or insignificant you may think it is. Just to drink, listen to me, just to drink Mountain Dew and you know it's going to kill you and you can't help it, that means you are dominated by your flesh, yeah. not the devil. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 just, I just can't seem to stop eating. I can't, I, my God, I can't seem to reduce the food on my plate. I 
I can't stop eating chips. I can't, for some reason, I just can't stop eating junk food. Well, the junk food going to kill you. The reason why junk food is going to kill you because your flesh is weak. You are weak in the flesh because you're not allowing the spirit man to dominate you. You're not, you're not allowing the real you to dominate you. The real you is spirit. Do you hear what I said? The real you is not flesh. It's not old nature. The real you is new nature. The real you is spirit. You are spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in a body. But you are spirit. God said, let us make man in our what? Image. image. That word image t- refers to character. Say character. character. Right. Image means character. Means God's essence. Meaning that, listen to me. Let me show you how powerful this thing is. You are God's essence. Meaning that you look just like God. From the standpoint of character, you are supposed to look just like him. When he made Adam, Adam was just like God. Whose water is this? Whose water? Is this your water? Okay, it's mine now. Well, Whose water is that right there? That's my water right here? This must be my water. Okay, this is my water. All right. This is God. Okay. I'm drinking this. This is God right here. God says, let us make man in our image. Right? Where did, so where did man come from? Man had to come from God. Man did not come, listen to me, man did not come from the earth. Man's spirit came directly out of God. In other words, God spoke to himself and brought man out of him. Yes. That's why the Bible, that's why that word, you look at that word image, it means essence. It means it's an exact copy. You have just heard from the world of Kingdom Vision Christian Center with Pastor Kevin Brown, located at 1945 Beast Ferry Road in Charleston. You can also visit us at www.kvchristiancenter.com and like us on Facebook. Remember, your freedom in Christ makes a difference in life. A night of impartation, the grace factor with Pastor Kevin Brown. But the blood of Christ speaks of what? Justification, redemption, reconciliation. This is the message that you're supposed to be persuaded by. Sunday, January 24th, 2016. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. Service starts 6 p.m. With national recording artist Canton Jones. Kingdom Vision Christian Center, 1945 Beesbury Road, Charleston, South Carolina. Or visit kbchristiancenter.com.